welcome to part three of painting silk banners with Isabella E. The next thing that we're going to do now that all of the resist and outline is all pretty much dry. Um, sometimes if you find a couple of spots that are still dry or that are still wet to the touch, you can use a hair dryer on like the hottest setting and go over it and dry them. And if you're in a humid climate where it's colder, that's another good way to kind of speed up the drying process so that you can kind of continue working is just to use a hair dryer. Uh, but right now, because it's like freaking 100 degrees outside today uh, and super dry, it dried relatively quickly. So I'm just going to go ahead and start filling in each color. I do one at a time. So I'll do everything that's blue or everything that's red all at once um, so that I can block out all of the colors and not have to stop. Uh, most of the time that's going to be my method if I'm doing something that's more complicated like occasionally I've done saints or scenery and stuff that I might approach it more like a watercolor painting but for just simple heraldry and stuff you're just going to fill in one color until you're done and then fill in the next. The spongy brushes that I use I get them damp before I start because it helps the brush absorb the paint. Uh, I've noticed when it's dry it's actually a lot kind of more difficult to work with. So get it a little bit damp before you start. Um, the other thing that I do is I keep on one of the tables next to me uh, all of the bottles of the colors that I'm going to be using and then I just use disposable plastic cups and I put a, a smaller amount of dye in them than keeping them in the big bottle. And the reason for that is because I have accidentally spilled about half of one of these bottles all over the place before and not only ruined the banner that I was working on but all over my jeans all over the floor so if you're kind of a klutz or um, you know you're just afraid that you might bump something and spill then use one of these. I just think it's a lot easier to deal with than having a big handful of paint. So I'm gonna start with blue. And again I don't dilute any of the colors I just use them straight out of the bottle. You get your brightest colors that way and also when we go to heat treat it and rinse a little bit of the excess color out, you're going to get the best dye concentration in there that you can so that it's going to stay nice and bright. Now you're going to get your brush wet enough to where you don't have to work really hard to get enough color on the banner, but you don't want it dripping all over the place. So just kind of saturate it a little bit and then um, most of the time you're not going to need to brush directly on top of or really right next to your resist line. You should get enough liquid in your brush so that the fabric is going to soak it up all the way to the edge of where your resist is at. And the reason that you want it to do that is uh, so you don't get color in spots that you don't want it. You know, you don't want your white is going to be blue bleeding into white or anything like that. Well, there you have it. This one's pretty much done now, except for the last things that we need to do. And we're going to heat treat it, cut it out, and then go ahead and sew on ties or some kind of sleeve to hoist this banner with. Um, other than that, 
it's pretty much finished. So this is the end of part three. In part four, we'll talk about finishing and then some tips and tricks or troubleshooting what to do uh, in certain situations if you need to be able to fix a mistake or salvage something you did and also some tips on cleaning and care of these things and how to make them last as long as possible. Thank you again. This has been Isabella E. and uh, we'll see you soon.